start off. There we go. So I'm just going to let you all know that we are recording today's session um, and it will be posted to our meet an expert playlist on our YouTube channel. Um, our recording today is just though of our speakers. So myself and Senator Donovan. So we won't, if you choose to have your video on at home, your video won't be recorded. So I just want to give everyone a heads up. Um, also, welcome. My name is Amy Artzer, and I am the Girl Scouts of Colorado Community Partnerships Manager, which means that I am the lucky person who gets to work with all sorts of cool people like Senator Carrie Donovan, who's going to be joining us here in a moment. Um, a few housekeeping items is that we will be keeping everyone on mute for the duration of today's program, of today's Meet an Expert session. So if you need anything, um, you can always use the chat box to message me. Um, we will be opening up the chat box a little bit later for some questions. So you just, if you need anything, technical questions, anything like that, please use the chat box. Um, we will, like I said, be opening the chat box up for questions later. So save your questions until I tell you that we're going to take questions now. Um, I think those are all of our housekeeping items. So um, please note that there are Girl Scouts of all ages on today's session. So um, just keep that in mind as you ask questions and as you have your video on. Um, now, before I things, turn things over to Senator Carrie Donovan, um, we can kick things off with the Girl Scout promise and law. So please follow along from home. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. And now the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Well done, everybody. Okay, so now I'm going to turn things over to Senator Carrie Donovan, who's going to join us today and talk about herself. And then we're going to have a chance for all of you to answer, to ask her some questions. So take it away. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, Girl Scouts of Colorado. I am so excited to be a part of your Meet an Expert series. Um, and I'm just more excited to be able to spend uh, this, this hour with a bunch of incredible young women and girls uh, who have joined together under the Girl Scout banner to figure out how to become better leaders. Uh, and that's certainly what we always need in this world is, is strong girl leaders who are, are courageous and thoughtful about others. So my name is Carrie Donovan and I have been a state senator for six years. Um, I'm joining you from my home and you'll see this stairway behind me might be filled with any of my various pets at any time. So some of you can see how many animals you see go up and down the stairs. And maybe we can have a bet at the end of who comes up with the most because they are quite adventurous little beings that love to explore. I was first elected to be a state senator in 2014. And I began my service in January of 2015. Before being a state senator, I was running my family's ranch in uh, right outside of Vail, and I was on the Vail Town Council. And so I very quickly went from being a part of local government to being a part of state government. So in local government, you work on, on issues such as making sure neighborhoods are safe and well-planned. You may talk about what you want the future of your town to be, where should homes be, where should schools be, where should businesses be? You may talk about how the best you should take care of the environment that your town is around, what you should do with your rivers, where should there be a park? And then I went from that of being a Vale Town Councilor in local government to being elected to be a state senator at state government. Now as a state senator, I'm one of 35 members of the Colorado State Senate. The Colorado State Senate is one chamber of the legislative branch at the state level. The other chamber or group that we work with is the House. And the House has 65 members. So in total, you'll see that we are at 100 
state level elected officials. And we work together. And some of us are Republicans, and some of us are Democrats. And once in a while, we even get someone who's an independent. Now, these two chambers work together to pass laws. And how do we do that? Well, we run bills. Bill is just kind of a name for a law that we call it while we're working on it. And all hundred people, both in the Senate and the House, get to vote on if that bill becomes a law. After that happens, the governor for the state of Colorado, who right now is Governor Jared Polis, he gets the final decision on if that bill that's been approved by the majority of both the Senate and the House will become law. And he does that by signing the bill. He can also decide not to sign that bill and that's called vetoing. And then it won't become law. I'm sure many of you guys can think of laws in your head. They're kind of the rules of society, just like we have classroom rules that help us know how to treat each other in the classroom, you know, should how we treat even the common shared things in a classroom or maybe how we take care of a classroom pet. Laws tell us as a broader group of people how we should interact and take care of each other. But sometimes you won't always think of things that mean laws. And so I thought we could talk about two things that I've passed as laws today that you may not even think are typically laws. When I talk to uh, kids in classrooms, the ideas that they most often present as laws are things like speed limits or not being able to kill someone, right? That's murder. Or the age at which you can vote. And you're right, those are all laws. Those are all bills that were at one time carried by a senator or a representative and gone through the very same process that we go through today to turn an idea into a bill and into a law. So one that I did a couple years ago was this one. This idea was that when you go hunting in Colorado, you are required to wear bright orange, fluorescent orange. That's a law that we passed. We passed that law in order to make sure that everyone out there was safe and could be seen. But after talking to girls and women, they said, you know, sometimes it feels like we don't always belong in hunting because we have to wear orange and there aren't really choices. And it would be neat if there was more of a way for women to feel like they belonged in hunting. So I carried a law that made it, um, I carried a law that would make it okay and legal for you to also wear bright pink when you went hunting. Now we discussed this and we debated it and everyone decided if they were gonna vote yes or no on it. And at the end of the day, enough senators voted for it and enough representatives voted for it. And the senator signed it, the governor signed it and it became law. So now you can wear pink when you go hunting in Colorado. And this is how I organize my work when I'm working on, on bills that will become laws. We make these little books of all the ideas and things that we're gonna work on. And this is what a law looks like before it's official. This is what a bill looks like when we're working on it. And if you could see a little bit better, you'd see that my name is there because I was the one that was working on it. And eventually this would be filled with all the people that supported the idea. And then this language down here that we all discuss and debate eventually gets formalized into the law that gets printed in books that everyone across the state can reference so they know how to follow the rules. Here's another one I just worked on. 
this one we just passed yesterday because we were in special session. Special session is an incredibly unique thing that happens that when the governor, the Senate and the House all decide that there's an emergency law that we need to pass. So this law, once the governor signs it, he hasn't signed it yet. Once the governor signs it, this law will take $20 million and will put it into a program in order to pay for technology and broadband for teachers and students and schools across the entire state. $20 million, that's a lot of money. But I bet that we'll still have to find even more money in the coming months to do more work on broadband because we all know how important it is. And we probably know some of our friends or families that don't have very good broadband and what that means. So that is one that you might even hear about in the news last night it was on the news and you might even hear about it in the next couple of days as governor Polis signs it so we called it connecting kids and it was about getting 20 million dollars of the state's money back out to schools it is really fun to be a state senator i've done it for six years and i have two more years left we're only allowed eight years. And in that time, we have to get reelected to the office. One of the really neat things we get as a state senator is we get our own license plate. And so by this one, you can see that I'm a senator from Senate District 5. So these are really special because there's only, other, there's only 34 other cars in the entire state that get these. And then the ones that the House of Representatives gets look a little bit different, but these are really special. And you can see the Capitol right there, which is a wonderful place to work. And I feel so lucky to have been elected to this. But I wanted to end that I think one of the most important parts about being an elected official and a leader is the integrity of your word. Because once you become an elected official, People really have to trust you and it's just you. They have to believe in you and trust you and think that your values align with theirs and believe that you're gonna do the best thing for them. So that's something that I hold very high in esteem when I think about my role as a state Senator is how honest and thoughtful and empathetic I have to be as a leader because your word is oftentimes the only thing you have. When you're making bills, when I'm working on this bill, or when I was working on this bill, it was all about ideas. And it was all about figuring out what was the best for the future of the state. And when you're talking about ideas and trying to convince people to work with you and think that your idea is the best, you really have to have a good reputation, have people that trust you, develop connections, and have people believe that you are doing the good hard work for the right reason. And I'll end here. If any of you are thinking that in your future as part of your leadership role, you would like to run for public office, maybe school board, maybe the mayor of a town, maybe the secretary of state, a state senator like me or president, you should definitely do it. There still aren't enough women that are elected to office. And if America is truly supposed to have elected bodies that reflect the country, the state, the city, or the community that we represent, then we need a lot more women to office. And women don't always think that we are the best fit for office and that we should always run. But I'm telling you that you should absolutely think of yourselves as a strong leader and someone who's absolutely capable of running for office and winning and being vo the voice for the people that you would represent in that office. So let's answer some questions. Very cool. Awesome. So we are going to open up our chat box now. Um, so please feel free to enter your questions for Senator Donovan into the chat box. Um, and I'll read them out loud. Please only enter them once. 
And um, if you want, so you can send them to me directly, but our chat box is open. So if you want other people to see your questions, you can enter them to everyone. Um, but I'll go through them and uh, read them out loud and we'll go from there. I might, if a, if a ton of questions come in, I might close the chat box up again, um, just so that we can make sure that we get all of them answered, but feel free to enter your questions now. Um, so somebody asked, are there any bills proposed by Girl Scouts? Or you could also answer, how are bills proposed? I don't know of a bill since I've been there that was proposed directly by the Girl Scouts, but you absolutely could. And in fact, you should. You would propose a bill by working with your local elected official, depending on where you are trying to change the world. So if you wanted to change something in your local community, you would go talk to your counselor, your, your, um, your city counselor or whatever um, they might be called in your local town or city. At the county level, there's county commissioners. And there's probably just a couple of those for every county that you live in. If you wanna make a law that would impact the entire state, you would approach your state senator or state representative and ask them to help you work on a new law idea. Now, sometimes that can be a lot harder than it sounds because there can be some hurdles or unexpected issues, but a good representative will always want to hear your ideas. I've carried many bills that have turned into laws because someone that lived in a community that I represent brought the idea forward. Sometimes it's a brand new idea and sometimes it's just, you know, it'd be really great if you could fix this because it's not working very well. And there's no age restriction or requirement. Any person can bring forward an idea and work with our senator to get it passed into law. Cool. Um, Grace asked, what is an independent? Oh, nice question, Grace. An independent is someone who hasn't decided to be a part of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. There are actually lots and lots of different political parties in the United States. Maybe you've heard of the Green Party with the Democratic and the Republicans being the biggest and the most popular. But some people decide they just don't wanna be a part of a party because maybe they believe parts of one aspect of a party and parts of another aspect of a party and so they just decide that they're gonna be independent. They're gonna be between the two parties. And those are, those are um, very rare. We've only had one independent lawmaker out of a hundred in the six years that I've been there. Most often people run as a Democrat or as a Republican. Um, why do you only get eight years on the job? We only get eight years on the job because the citizens of Colorado voted on that idea in the 90s. And those are called term limits. So every elected office has a term limit associated with it um, at the state level. And most of those are eight years. In the Senate, we get to do two terms of four years. In the House, you do four terms of two years meaning that the representatives in the House have to run for re-election twice as often as senators. The governor, the secretary of state, the attorney general, the lieutenant governor, and the treasurer also all serve eight years. What made you want to run for senator? I was raised in a family that one of our family values was public service by serving on an elected board. I'm sure as Girl Scout families, you guys all have a way that you pay it forward. Maybe you do trash pickup. Uh, maybe you volunteer at a soup kitchen. Maybe you buy presents for a needy family around the holidays. The family value that I was raised in is that a way to pay it back to your community was to serve an elected office, to be a public servant. And so when the opportunity came to run for state Senate, there was no way I could say no. And I jumped into running and I only won the first time by less than 2%. 
just 1,200 votes across a huge part of Colorado. So it was a really hard race and I barely won, but I did win. And then I got to spend four years working hard for the people that elected me. And the next time I ran, I went from 2% to 20% of winning my election. Awesome. Um, so somebody asked, how do you build connections to help you in, in your work or to help you pass new laws? In, in the work of an elected official or public servant, it is all about connections because people have to trust you in order to vote for the thing that you are saying. And I've found that connections are just about getting to know someone. And sometimes that's a little bit harder than others. I'm sure you guys have friends that you clicked with like immediately, they were your bestie. And you had other friends that it just took longer before you guys figured out what you had in common or what you both liked. It's the same in the state capitol. There are some people that I just was like instant, like this is gonna be my buddy, we're gonna get along really well. And then other people, it might've taken a year before I figured out something we had in common. And then those connections allow you to have really tough conversations about what their ideas are about the future of Colorado. And then once you build those connections, then you can have very honest conversations about if they like your idea or not. Sometimes they'll say, no, I'm not gonna vote for your bill. And that's okay too, if you've established a strong connection, they'll be there the next time when you guys work on your next idea. Um, Ada asked, is a lawyer similar to a senator? Oh, you know what? A lot of people who study law do become senators because you're identifying the exact right piece of what they have in common is work on laws. But you don't necessarily have to be a lawyer to become a senator or representative. You can be like me. I was a rancher and I worked in education. I became a senator. So they work on the same topic areas, but senators and representatives make the laws that the lawyers then have to make sure are followed or practiced out in the real world. Great. Um, lots of awesome questions coming in. So I'm scrolling back a little bit to make sure that we get through all of them. Um, Troop 75918 asks, what is the hardest part of your job? Oh, I think the, there, there are lots of hard things about this job, but I think one of the hardest things is, is that it is, um, it's very much you and you alone who may get um, told that you're doing a bad job or that people disagree with you, or maybe they'll be uh, a news anchor who says, you know, this bill was such a bad idea. And sometimes if you're in a business or if you're in a group of people, right, it's not you, the individual who is being, being uh, maybe attacked or told that they're doing poorly. When you run for elected office, it is very much you yourself who is out there and out front. And that can be really hard. Um, okay, so uh, Noah asked how many bills are there or maybe how many bills come up in a session? I know that's kind of a hard uh -huh. answer, but. No, um, yeah, so we will work on about 600 bills in a session. And the session runs for four months starting in January. Now, not all bills become laws because sometimes you can't get enough people to vote for your bill to turn it into law. So if we bring up 600 bills or 600 new ideas for laws, a little over half of those will become laws that become permanent in the state of Colorado. Great. Um, so here's a wonderful question. How do you make yourself heard in a community of men? I sometimes have trouble communicating with the boys in my class and it feels like I can't get through to them and I would love to know how. Oh, this is such an important thing to start thinking about when you are a girl because it is a challenge that you will face for your entire life. 
So it's an important one to think about, especially when you're in a classroom setting, because uh, that classroom setting will be a model for a lot of the work you do in business or whatever career you pursue. Or if you um, don't have um, a professional career, you know, find yourself advocating for your ideas for communities, no matter what pathway you choose. I think it is important to know that men and women tend to communicate differently. Now, of course, we're making this very simple about men just versus women when we know that it is not always just that simple. But in general, to talk about it, men often do communicate different from women. Women like to listen to each other, to collaborate, to try to find the middle ground. Whereas men often state an idea with confidence without always an expectation that part of the end goal is the process of getting there. Whereas women, I think, are much more interested in the process of getting to the end conclusion. So if you, found, if you find guys that just aren't listening to you or a classroom of boys that just seem to don't wanna hear what you're saying, it may be as necessary to say like, hey guys, I would really appreciate if you would listen to what I'm saying. I think it's important. So you sometimes you just need to be an advocate for yourself to break into that group. But always do it respectfully. And I think always being the listener in the group does pay off in the long run, even if at the time you think you aren't being heard. In the long run, you will end up having more information in that big, beautiful brain of yours to use in the days ahead. That's wonderful advice. Um, Elise asked, how did you do in school? Like, were you an A plus student all the time? I was a pretty good student. <laughs> I really loved school. I loved my teachers. Um, I will tell you a little known fact about me is that I never missed a day of school from kindergarten to 12th grade. Oh my gosh, 6,644 days straight of school. So I really loved school. I was not a straight A student though. I struggled in some classes um, because I had a form of dyslexia. And so sometimes I just couldn't make words work. They just didn't line up for me. I couldn't figure out how to spell things. Sometimes my essays were just a little too gobbly gook to get a good grade. Um, but um, I did really love school uh, and love the part of learning. That's I think was my favorite part of school. Like every day, every course was gonna be something new, something, something new to learn. And a lot of that overlaps with why I love being a senator so much is every day there's a new problem, there's a new issue, there's a new complex idea. And part of my job is to make sure that I understand to the best of my ability all those new ideas. It might be transportation and highways. It might be broadband and the internet. It might be healthcare and insurance. It might be agriculture and water. It might be climate change and automated vehicles. It's kind of endless and it's really fun. Great. Um, so somebody asked, have you been working from home recently? And if you have been, what's the hardest part about working from home for you? I have been working at home and I actually split my time between um, being in Denver to be close to the capital and in my hometown of Vail. So I've been working from both places. Um, we were in the Capitol for the special session that just ended. So that was interesting to be back there. We were, all, we were all wearing two masks and trying to be super, super safe. And we all got tested for COVID um, every morning to make sure that we were trying to take all the precautions we could. I think what's been hard from working from home is my husband is also involved in politics and he works from home. And so we both have a lot of Zooms and a lot of important meetings. And sometimes those meetings are confidential and we can't hear what each other are talking about even though we're husband and wife. So it's been very funny to always be flexible and accommodating and understanding. And like, this is the first time I've ever done a Zoom from this location. 
because my husband needed to be in the office. So I just set up a stool. I'll show you. Guys. <laughs> I had to set up a stool and sit on my couch. And so this is my really fancy desk I'm working <laughs> from. Everyone has a fun setup these days. Yes. <laughs> um, somebody asked, what's your biggest pet peeve at work? Oh yeah, pet peeves are so interesting, right? Because we all have them. And there's, I think they, there we call them pet peeves because they're so unique to each person. And then that makes it hard sometimes for other people to understand like what drives you nuts. Uh, one of my big things that really upsets me is when people are honest with me. I do not like that. That's one thing that might even get beyond a pet peeve. Like that's something that I just don't like to tolerate if people lie to me and I find out about it. I do not like that at all. Let's see for a pet peeve in the state Senate, we have a lot of rules and, um, and those aren't even, not like laws. Like we have rules for just how the Senate operates. And I'm a rule follower. I always have been. And so I think my pet peeve is when people just kind of bend the rules a little bit and don't follow them um, exactly as much as they should. Um, were you a Girl Scout growing up? I was not a Girl Scout growing up. I was thinking about that before I got on this call. I don't think um, I don't think we had Girl Scouts in my area when I was growing up. And I'm I'm not that old, but I'm old enough that we didn't have internet when I would have been a Girl Scout. So I wouldn't have been able to do like fun digital stuff. So uh, maybe if I end up ever having a daughter, she will get the chance to be a Girl Scout. Great. Well, you're an honorary Girl Scout today. I love that. <laughs> um, how many bills are there that haven't been, that haven't been approved, or maybe how many come up every session that don't get approved? Yeah. So quite a few. Um, and sometimes for different reasons. So um, if we do 600 bills and about a little less than half of those, so you know, 275 or 300 of those don't get passed into law. Sometimes it can be because a bunch of people are against your idea. You know, they think it might hurt them or it might hurt the state because of the way the law that it was written. Um, you know, not all elected officials might have the same soul and heart. And I would say that some elected officials don't go to office to try to help everyone. And some of them can have mean and bad ideas. And so we try to make sure that those bills don't become laws. You know, perhaps a bill that would change how a family is defined. That's kind of a hurtful idea to me. I don't like that idea. And so that's a bill that I would never support. I would never support that says a kiddo couldn't have a mom and a mom or a dad and a dad. Um, and there's some people that just want parents to be defined as a mom and a dad. Um, other bills might not become law because as you start working through the process, you find a big problem and you go, whoops, this one is not quite ready yet. We need to keep working on this idea. And so you say, I'm going to take this bill and I'm going to ask that you guys don't vote for it because it's not ready yet. Because when you're making law, those have to be really, really good ideas. Uh, because like you said, you don't wanna make a mistake with how you write a law because it has such impacts on everyone's life. Those are such interesting points. Um, so here's something, and I'm not sure what this means, but I think you might. Somebody asked, how is Gary? And that queso miss is playing with Gary. <laughs> I know who that is coming from. <laughs> One of my um, fellow senators, Senator Faith Winner, and her daughter, Sienna, are on the call. So let me see, Gary, will you come say hi? Gary is so asleep. Here, we'll look at the map <laughs> of the Zoom. And you guys are also getting to see my living room now a lot. Let's see, where is he? Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, goodness. So that's Gary. 
Um, he is um, one of my dogs and he comes to this Capitol with me every day. And Senator Winner, um, her daughter once in a while, lets Senator Winner bring her dog Queso to the Capitol. And they play quite a bit, but I can't believe how asleep Gary is. Gary, wake up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hi, Gary. So that's Gary. Very fun. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, I'm glad that that made sense to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So we still have awesome questions. Um, I closed the chat box. Everyone can still enter questions for me, but I just want to make sure that we're kind of staying um, on our conversation. Um, so somebody asked, if you weren't a state senator, what would you do for a job? So all, um, so all sen senators and representatives, almost all of us have other jobs because in Colorado, the Senate and the House are considered part-time legislators, legislatures, which means we don't meet full-time and we also don't get paid full-time. So many of us have to have another job in order to pay the bills and to buy dog food for Gary. So my other job is that I run my family's ranch, which is just outside of Vail. It's near Edwards, if you know um, that part of Colorado. And I do that the rest of the time. But it's also important to know that you, you don't always, um, just because you're not in session working on bills, it's not like my job ends because people always have problems. They might always need help. And that's another really important part of being an elected official at the state level is if someone's having a problem with a state, um, a, an aspect of the state, like a state agency or a state department, then um, sometimes they'll call me to help them. You could think of something like driver's license or unemployment or getting a license for their business, all things like that, uh, you know, people have problems, then they'll call me. So even though it's not supposed to be full-time, my phone and, and email are always on full-time. Sure. Um, so here's a question that's a little bit personal and you can decide if you want to answer it, um, but how much money does a state senator make in a year? Yeah, we make a little over $30,000. And I know when I was a kid, I had no concept of how much a salary was, if that was a lot or a little. $30,000 is a small salary compared to other um, jobs and professions. And a salary means that's what you get paid for an entire year. So we make a little over $30,000 for the entire year. We will get paid a little extra money if we have to drive in for a long ways, or if we get appointed to another committee, we'll get paid to do that as well. But overall, it is considered a low paying job. Not as low paying as like minimum wage, which many of you may hear or have discussed, um, but minimum wage and versus salary is a little bit different. Um, but as a salary, making just over $30,000 um, is hard to uh, live on for 12 months. And that's why many of us have other jobs. Sure. Um, okay, here's a question. Do you get to go to fancy dinners? And if you do, what is your favorite food there? <laughs> we, um, we, of course, would get to go to a fancy dinner if we were going to pay for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> But uh, it's not quite like as fancy as like sometimes you see at the White House where they have those big special dinners, you know, like if the if the president of France comes and visits or something like that. We don't have anything quite like that. Um, but you end up you end up going to a lot of like coffees and lunches and dinners because that's a great place to make connections. Colorado also has some of the most strict ethics rules in the entire country. And ethics are kind of rules that dictate um, your behavior. Um, it, so it says, uh, you know, that you can't accept gifts because that might influence how you would vote. 
And in that is considered fancy dinners. So we can't go to fancy dinners unless we pay for them ourselves. Sure. Um, how old do you have to be to be a state senator? Oh my gosh, you are testing my knowledge. <laughs> um, I believe it's 18. I don't think it's 21. I think it's 18 to be a state senator. I'm gonna, if Faith, you're listening and I said that wrong, Senator Winner, you should correct me, but I think it's, you can text me <laughs> so we get the right okay. information from these smart, smart ladies. Um, but I'm, I'm quite sure it's um, 18 to run for a state office in Colorado. You can run for your town council often at younger ages. And there's also a lot of other service opportunities. Sometimes um, cities or towns might have youth councils um, that are really fun to get involved in, or, you know, advisory boards, like um, there might be an advisory board on like how a park is run um, or something like that. Oh yes, Senator Winner, um, actually Senator Winner's daughter, <laughs> Sienna just helped me and confirmed it's 18 years. Great. Um, and here's kind of, we're going back. So um, someone wrote in the chat box that she just researched Girl Scouts proposing bills because we talked about this in the very beginning. And yeah. In 2004, a junior level troop, so that's fourth and fifth graders, proposed a new state rock, the Yule Marble. And in 2014, a troop in Castle Rock proposed a new state symbol, the cactus. And a troop in Aurora, a few years, this, she doesn't put the year, but a few years ago, um, proposed a new law in the city about adults smoking in cars where children are present. Um, okay. So there have been some Girl Scouts out there who have proposed new bills and laws. Um, so it definitely can be done. And I think also if you Google, um, you can find out information more about what, what girls have done in Colorado and also girls around the country. Um, because I do think that being civically engaged and making an impact on the community is something that Girl Scouts are super capable of doing. Um, so get out there girls, because it can be done. Agreed. Um, okay, so still lots more questions. I love this. Um, mm -mm, what was your first job? Well, let's see. What was my first real, like, real, real job? Um, I think I would say my first real, real job was in high school. I worked in the kitchen of a restaurant at the base of Beaver Creek called Mirabelle, and it's still around, and it was a really, talk about fancy dinners, whew, it was a very, very fancy French restaurant. And I worked in the kitchen as a chef. And I did that through the rest of high school and all through college. Cool. Um, if a bill is already made, how can you change it? Yeah, so um, if a bill like these guys, if a bill is still in this form that it's being worked on, you can run amendments. And amendments, um, are exactly what you said, a way to change the bill. And uh, sometimes it can be huge, big changes. Sometimes it can just be little changes, like adding a word so that it's more clear. So amendments are kind of how we continue to work on like a draft, just like how you guys have first, second, even like fourth and fifth drafts of papers and big projects you might be doing. Amendments are the way that we change a bill as it goes through different drafts. Now, once a bill has been passed into law, you would actually have to carry a whole another bill to change that law. And that happens a lot. So a lot of the um, bills that we carry, when I said like of those 600 bills we carry, a lot of them are changing previous law. Sometimes because the law just doesn't work anymore. Um, sometimes because there may be new information um, sometimes it's just like technology changes or culture changes, you know, and so there's a lot of different reasons that we go back to change laws. Colorado was established, who knows, does anyone know when Colorado was established? All right, think of a number in your head, 1876. Okay, so Colorado was established in 1876. So you can think the laws that we would have written in 1876 are probably a lot different than the laws we have now. And so you change those by passing other laws. Um, have you ever met the president or a president? 
I met, I have not met uh, President Trump nor President Obama. Um, I, I think the only president that I met was President Ford, um, but he passed away a number of years ago. So unless you are big history buffs, you might not be really familiar with President Ford. President Ford was who took over for President Nixon. A lot more people know about President Nixon than President Ford, but he was really good friends with my mom and dad. And so I got to meet him um, as a little girl, actually on multiple occasions. So I feel pretty, I feel pretty lucky about that. Um, I've been around a lot of other like presidents and like famous people, but the only one I'd say I really met um, is um, uh, President Ford. President Ford. Very cool. Um, so somebody asked, what school did you go to growing up and did you have to wear a uniform in school? I went to um, Red Sandstone Elementary, um, which is right in Vail. You can see it if you guys are, if you guys go to Vail a lot, it's right by where the pedestrian overpass goes across the interstate. And then I went to Minturn Middle School and I went to Battle Mountain High School. Battle Mountain High School is in a different place than it was when I went there, but it's still around. And then I went to the University of Notre Dame for college. Um, I did not have to wear a uniform in any of my public schools, Red Sandstone, Minturn, and Battle Mountain. And um, University of Notre Dame is a private college, but we didn't have uniforms there either. Okay. Um, how many women, how many senators are women right now? Do you know? Let's Senate see. In Colorado. <laughs> Um, there is one woman Senator on the Republican side and she actually is at the end of her term, but they elected another woman woman. So there'll be one woman over there. And then on our side, you guys are going to have to weirdly watch me figure this out in my head in real time. Cause I have to count. <laughs> there is Senator Donovan, Senator Winner, Senator Danielson, Senator Patterson, Senator Story, Senator Fields, Senator Janal, Senator Todd. I think that's it. I think there are eight of us plus Senator Marble. So there are nine senators um, in Colorado on the, um, the state Senate side who are women. Very cool. I like the live counting. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> And I feel like I probably missed someone. So whoever I missed, I apologize. <laughs> so um, I think we've gotten right just through the questions that we've received so far. Um, I, have a, I have a question though. On the um, kind of workbooks that you showed us, I saw like some letters and numbers. What do those mean? Oh, that is such good. Um, First of all, you're so observant, but it's such fun <laughs> trivia too. Okay, which one should we start with? Let me show you this one. And I assume we're all getting good at reading things backwards at this point, but <laughs> um, so this says Senate Bill 16-68, SB 16-68. We'll almost always talk a bill by that number. So we'll call it Senate Bill 68, but what you can see is SB means Senate. So this is where it starts. Every bill can start in the House or the Senate, but this letter tells you where. So Senate bill, this is the year. So I carried and passed this bill in 2016. And then this is the order that it's introduced. So this was the 68th bill of the 2016 session. Now, let's see if we can decipher this one together. So where do you guys think this bill started? Did it start in the House or the Senate? So I've, I've opened up the chat box so we can actually put, you can put your answers <laughs> in the chat box and make sure you put, you put it to everyone so we can all see everyone's answers. Oh, you guys are so freaking smart. Yes, okay, so we know that it started in the House. What year do you guys think it was? Do 
Yeah, you guys got it. Good job. House bill of 2020. Now this is a little weird. It has that B on it because this was from the special session that we just had. So this marks it as a bill from the special session. Okay, now this is gonna be a little bit trickier because I didn't give you guys a big hint on this before. Do you guys think that we did over a thousand bills this year in this special session? That was only three days. Yeah, we probably did do a thousand bills. <laughs> So if we don't think that we did a thousand, which bill do you think this was? You guys are so gosh darn smart. Yep, so this was house bill from 2020 from the special session and it was the first bill of that special session in the house. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so we are coming up against the end of our time together. So I'm going to wrap things up with two last questions for you. One is, um, what advice, if any, would you like to leave all the Girl Scouts listening, either live or listening to this recording in the future? What advice would you like to leave them with? And then to close things out, what is your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Uh, <laughs> that, that, I feel like I'd do them the, them the choice. Um, so favorite Girl Scout cookies, hands down, hand, like no even close, like I kind of have to, hands down, Samoa's, don't come at me with Thin Mints, it's okay. Um, and I eat too many of them. And so I have to um, vastly restrict how many boxes I buy at a time. What advice would I give you guys? Um, I think take some time, no matter how old you are as a girl, to think about who you are, because we don't always take time to do that. We get so busy with homework or watching the next cool video or trying to figure out what's going on on TikTok or figuring out what our friends are doing. You can so quickly lose yourself in the busyness of a day. So think about who you are and then think about who do you want to be? Who do you want to be next year? When you start school next year, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be four years from now? When you move schools or go to college? And then think about who do you want to be as an adult? What does that adult look like? What are their values? Have they changed the world? How did you change the world? So I would say really take time to think about who you are and who you want to be. Because if you take time to do that, then it'll start reflecting in every action you do. And you won't have to plan on how you change the world. You're just gonna naturally change the world because you know deep down that that's who you wanna be. And every day you've worked on being that good, strong, amazing, wonderful girl that will just change the world because you are who you are. So that's, that would be my advice. Take time on yourself to think about who you are and who you want to be. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Well, I think that's the end of our program today of our Meet an Expert. I want to remind all the Girl Scouts out there that you can get your Meet an Expert patch um, through the Girl Scout shop online. And additionally, participating in today's Meet an Expert session fulfill, helps fill, fulfill requirements for your democracy badge for your Girl Scout level. So there's a democracy badge for every Girl Scout level. And one of the requirements is to get to know um, the structure of your, you know, local, state, federal government. And today's session absolutely helps work towards that. Um, so thank you to all the Girl Scouts who are listening out there. I hope you learned as much as I did. And huge, huge, huge thank you to Senator Carrie Donovan. Um, this was really so enjoyable. Like I said, I hope all the girls learned as much as I did. We so appreciate your time today and cannot thank you enough. Well, thank you so much. And I think that this guy <laughs> wants to say bye to. <laughs> so thanks for having us. And if you guys were counting, I have this dog, Gary. I have a one-eyed no-tail cat named Mogwai. And I don't think you guys got to see or meet my two black dogs, Maggie and Bill Murray. 
So three dogs and one cat. <laughs> Fine. All right. Have a good rest of your night, everybody. Thanks.